So, listen, I want to hear your side of things. Tell me why it is beneficial for orcas to be in captivity. Well, for one thing, we learn so much about these animals, and we, have, we continue to learn about them. And the best way to understand what their needs are in the wild is to see them up close and in person, to understand their biology and behavior. And, and that book is not finished. We still have much to learn about killer whales and, and cetaceans in general. Here's the issue. This is from this assemblyman, Richard Bloom, who is the one proposing this, this legislation in the next half hour. This is what he said um, specifically, quote, in their natural habitat, orcas are family-oriented, highly adaptable, socially complex with cultural, tr cultural traditions, and are among the most intelligent creatures on this planet. If we truly want to help orca conservation, we should focus our efforts on restoring habitat in the wild and protecting our oceans. And then on top of that, I just have to push you, Gray, because, I mean, this is your livelihood. So this is in your best interest to prevent this bill, yes? Well, I don't, I don't currently train killer whales. I did early in my career. I used to work for a place called SeaWorld outside of Ohio. Uh, but I'm more concerned about the welfare of all species. And I know that when you take an animal like a killer whale, an iconic species, and you remove it from the public consciousness, as this bill would purport to do, you ensure that those animals will continue to decline in the wild. We see that time and time again. Out of sight means out of mind. And unless we have these avenues, like places like SeaWorld, to teach people to have compassion and to care about what happens to killer whales and our world oceans, uh, the future looks rather bleak for them. And I think this bill, as it's been described so far in the media, it, it, it collapses under the own, its own weight of inconsistencies, particularly with respect to animal welfare and future breeding and so forth. Here's what I want you to help me understand, because I hear you loud and clear on the research issue, and I know other folks on the other side would definitely push back on that. But so if this assemblyman, you know, gets his way and doesn't want these orcas, you know, caught or imported or, you know, you can't breed them in captivity, tell me, in your opinion, what the long-term effect of that would be. Well, I think the long-term effect of that would be the continued uh, disinterest in the world oceans, in the habitat that these animals use and depend upon, in their fish supply in the world. You know, we are using the oceans up as if they are an infinite resource, and they're clearly not. And so by having these animals front and center in the public consciousness, uh, I think it goes a long way to, to ensuring conservation, or at least the hope that we will conserve our world it, oceans. Is there any part of this that you agree with? I mean, the notion that these animals, you know, perform, and there are displays, and there's, there's unprotected con contact with humans, and, and the music. Would you be okay with well, any of that? You know, Brooke, actually, I think there's a misunderstanding uh, mis uh, here. Shows are not somehow somehow distinct from the rest of the animal's day. As a, as a trainer, I want animals to learn and to have fun continuously throughout the day, whether there are spectators or it's just myself there working with them, because the behaviors that they learn help us take better care of them, help us understand their needs better, and hopefully share that information with the general public.